Good morning, good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, I think it's good afternoon. Yeah, it's uh, 12 East African time. Yeah, uh, let's start. But before we start, uh, Matt was, what does the song mean? It was good. It's good vibe. I think it's from Ethiopia. I couldn't understand, but the song is really, really good. So uh, let's start our stand up. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, there's some announcement. But before we go to announcement and everything, let's just see the schedule. Maybe announce the schedule first. And then we go on with the the stand up yeah so today's stand up and uh just uh, be reminded that we also have presentation of week three today so uh, be reminded that so everyone is going to be presenting then after stand up of course we're gonna have community building session it's just our routine of monday routine just check in then we're gonna have our tutorial today which is introduction to week four challenge and then uh day one tutorial another tutorial telegram data analysis then we're gonna have independent challenge work tuesday tomorrow uh we won't have that much but yeah so let's let me just announce uh, i mean let me just go through the schedule of today but uh make sure i mean uh, be reminded that the schedule might change so keep refreshing i mean the schedule of this week yeah so you keep on refreshing just in case it changes we're gonna uh, let you know yeah so um another announcement uh you can be reminded that we have sent email on completion criteria and time adjustment for you guys so you can check and then um yeah i think that's the announcement maybe if you have another announcement from the team then we go on i guess no if you, we have some maybe after everything after the call so let's just go on and uh, we hand it to tutors we have our tutors here we are yeah radiant and uh, many more so let's start presentation i will hand the mic to you guys so uh, yeah you can take over maybe Hello. 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 yeah let's let's share guys let's share let's Share our presentation if you're ready with your presentation. You can. Yeah, you can raise a hand and then we fold the queue. Yeah, am I audible? Can can I be heard? Okay, sure. All right. So, who's ready to start? Who's ready to start? Okay, we have one person already in the queue. We're waiting for more. Okay, Matos. Okay, fine. So let's start with Abraham. And then uh, Matt was, then uh, Daniel, then we're going to follow with others. So I think Radiant uh, and AIA, you can take over. Thank you. Yeah, so sure. um, okay. Abram, Abram you, can, you can go on then. Abram, you can start Hello. your presentation you. and also share yours. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you, Abraham. Okay, okay. Let me share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, great. Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, I hope you have uh, a nice weekend. Uh, and uh, all of you have submitted the week three challenge. Uh, I'm going to present my uh, my project now. Uh, uh, this is week uh, week three challenges. I have done uh, exploratory, exploratory EDA analysis. 
have understand the data first, uh, identified all the columns, and there are about one million entries in the data sets. And the data sets uh, also contain uh, uh, the dates between uh, between this uh, this range. I have done just basic uh, data understanding in this uh, in this step. I've identified missing values about 9.7 percentage from all all the data sets. I have identified this this amount of missing values. And uh, for for the data cleaning part, I have just identified some relevant uh, columns and uh, do uh, data cleaning for for those. Uh, for those uh, columns only because i don't want to do it for all because i don't uh, I, i'm not going to use them for later so why why should i do that so i i have done that uh and then i i progress i move to uh, univariate analysis i've done uh, a descriptive analysis and uh, a data summarization for both uh, numerical and cata categorical data and uh, after that, I anal analyze uh, univariate uh, uh, single variables. Uh, then I, I try to plot them uh, like this. As you see here, uh, these are uh, plots for uh, total premium and uh, total claims. They, they may look, uh, they are zero, but uh, in, uh, in the descriptive uh, and uh, when I do a descriptive uh, analysis, I, I found that uh, there are uh, small small uh, percentage values, so the the plot may not uh, correctly identify the those uh, those amounts. Maybe because they are very small. I don't know. Uh, and then I I do the same thing for categorical uh, univariate analysis for categorical variables. And this is all. Uh, uh, this uh, these are um, uh, province, province number of province. As you see here, uh, a high high number of uh, customers are in these uh, regions. Similarly, for the for the others, you can see vehicle types here. Uh, most of the vehicles are passenger passenger vehicles. And most of them are uh, older than six months. There are very small number of uh, vehicles um, that are new. And uh, after that, I I performed by bivariate analysis. I try to analyze the relationship between total claim and uh, total premium. And uh, I think I noticed that uh, from this uh, analysis. Uh, it's hard to, you know, identify a clear relationship between these two variables. So I I done a correlation analysis between uh, these two variables too, and I identified that there is a small but positive correlation between them. Uh, then I did uh, 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 by variate analysis between uh, total claim and. Uh, uh, province and here I I was able to identify that here the regions some regions have high to, high total claim and some are low this this information uh, is very useful for our uh, business objective and uh, because for uh, for low low claim areas the marketing sh uh, the marketing team should identify uh, those areas and the lower uh, premium uh, value to attract more customers and then i uh, I, uh, I did uh, multivariate analysis here between uh, total claim total premium and uh, provinces but uh, uh, it's hard to see some you know patterns or you know relationships uh, it's hard for me to see here but then I did uh, total claim uh, and vehicle type and province uh, relationship, multivariance uh, relationship analysis here. But from this, I was able to identify, you see, uh, this graph can, uh, can show some useful insights. For example, uh, vehicle types 
some some vehicle types uh, show high high claims like heavy and medium shows uh, high high uh, total claim so uh, as we see earlier uh, the majority of vehicle types are passengers so the marketing sh team should uh, lower premium uh, premium amount to attract uh, more customers who have passenger vehicle types uh, I think, uh, yeah, these are uh, key insights I have already yeah, explained. Then after that, I did uh, hypothesis testing. Uh, I tested all the four hypotheses provided. I used the uh, chi-square test to, uh, to test uh, the hypothesis. And uh, I, I found the p the p-value for almost, yeah, all of them for all three uh, zero and for the last one between the yeah, men and women 0 0.03 so all these results indicate that the null hypothesis uh, uh, should be uh, rejected uh, that means there is a relationship between uh, uh, yeah there is a risk difference between provinces zip code and there is also a margin difference between zip codes uh, also between uh, gender so I did that, and then finally I performed uh, statical modeling. Statical modeling uh, for statical modeling uh, parts, I was only able to do the, uh, these three models because the uh, XG boost. Yeah, I think that's the name. Yeah, those uh, those model uh, were I was having difficulty installing the uh, that model. So I didn't perform uh, modeling analysis uh, on that, but for for the for the three listed here, I uh, I I evaluated these three models and identified these uh, results. From these results, I think uh, maybe the mean absolute error for random forest is better and uh, yeah overall yeah this these two models uh, looks they uh, they are performing well uh, and I done a f a future important analysis uh, using uh, those uh, those two models uh, these two models and uh, from uh, from these two models, the important future for predicting the total claim uh, were identified, and uh, those futures are the postal code, registered year of the vehicles, in the vehicle type, gender, and pro provinces. In the new vehicles, very small, but it were listed here also. I have identified this. So uh, finally, uh, this this uh, were my uh, my recommendation. The marketing team, as uh, it was uh, stated in the business objective, the whole analysis of this uh, objective is to may to make a recommendation for the marketing team so that they can attract uh, more customers. So they 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 should uh, provide uh, lower premium to attract uh, new clients for. Uh, low risk uh, regions uh, and also they they should uh, provide lower uh, premium rate for female clients because uh, i done analysis on that and uh, female clients uh, tends to have lower claim uh, than male clients so they, they can do that too and also uh, they can lower yeah uh, according to vehicle types so for uh, maybe for passenger vehicle type, they can lower the premium amount and attract uh, new customers. For the future works, uh, maybe I have noticed uh, there are uh, a lot of missing values. So uh, uh, appropriate data collection should be made to, uh, to better uh, predict and give accurate uh, analysis and uh, also, there should, the, the models above should be with more, more data to better uh, uh, predict uh, the risks coming in the future. 
and also uh, better uh, on uh, testing and uh, yeah uh, more 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 testing of hypothesis should be done for for the for the future this where my my future works i think this is it uh, if there is a question you can ask thank you uh, thank you Abraham. i think it's pretty good and uh, maybe i have heard you asking about how to do the ed and how to recommend things uh, analyzing the data and how to uh, have an insight from them in the previous week and things like that and i think you've performed well on this uh, on doing those uh, analysis and in having those insights maybe i heard you that you have uh, determined the relevant columns you've tried to determine those columns and maybe if you can explain what were those columns or what were those parameters and why you've chosen them or why you've said that those are the most important columns or parameters uh yeah uh, about uh, you know 31 uh, no 51 columns and uh, i selected uh, those uh, columns which are uh, really relevant uh, to this uh, business objective uh, I, I i i don't know i just it's common sense i, I don't know how i identified that uh, but for example, the the policy ID it was uh, clear uh, that some of the the columns were were not related to this uh, analysis. Uh, I don't have any sp a specific pattern for for uh, for doing this. Is, is that okay? Maybe I've asked this. <laughs> yeah, it is okay actually, but I have asked this because we need to understand the data and what every data, every parameters means, right? So we've gone through the introduction of what those data are, and maybe also it's also uh, represented in the document in what type of parameters do we need to know, focus on. Since if you're making an analysis based on uh, uh, the like the geographical area and things like that, we need to focus on that column and compare that with another parameter, which is uh very important which is maybe total claim or total premium right so maybe i was just asking for what those columns are and why you've choose them and yeah it's okay it was nice i think uh, we can proceed to yeah do you have anything to say Abraham? You can. okay thank you nothing it's okay okay matthews we can proceed Matthews, can you hear me? Mm. Am I audible? Am I audible? Okay. Thank you. Yes, Thank you, uh, you for giving me this chance. Okay. Yeah, you're audible. You can continue. Uh, uh, thank you for giving me this chance. Uh, uh, last week, task was uh, insurance claim analysis report uh, project. Uh, here was uh, the main thing that, that I was uh, uh, asked to do. Uh, and uh, to start from the beginning, uh, the first task was uh, the importance of uh, doing ED analysis to understand the data sets, uh, the data sets and the uh, uh, relevant patterns uh, inside to guide business decisions. Uh, that are uh, key for uh, pre uh, for predictive model in the task four. And uh, the second thing we do to ask was uh, doing uh, DBC, uh, data data version control, uh, to, to ensure that uh, robust data management and the version control for uh, reproductivity in ML flow and the vital for project integrity and the collaboration. Uh, collaboration. Uh, the third was uh, AB analysis, uh, AB hypothesis uh, testing, uh, provide insight into risk and the margin uh, dynamic, uh, the dynamics uh, to get that one. And the, for the, the task four was uh, statistical modeling uh, to see to predict uh, 
what features are critical for uh, uh, for the company decision making or profit uh, or strategical uh, uh, the first thing i did was uh, uh, first, uh, I, I checked the data overview. Uh, the data has uh, this uh, this amount recurrence uh, in the uh, 52 columns. Uh, uh, in the, that, I, I then uh, uh, missing. Uh, I check the missing values, and uh, I have get some missing values. So uh, I, I've tried to clean it using uh, imputation techniques and. Uh, uh, dropping uh, that columns that have uh, more than 50-15 percent of values, and then uh, what I was done uh, like like here, I use imputation technique and uh, uh, check the quality of the data. After that, uh, I done media analysis, uh, identify the key attribute distribution, uh, the key attributes that are have uh, much uh, that are to get more insight. And then uh, in the analysis, I use uh, I done, uh, univariant analysis uh, with histogram in the bar chart, uh, uh, bivariant analysis uh, using uh, their uh, scatter plot in the correlation. Uh, hello? The key, yeah, hello? Am I uh, I think yeah. your, your screen. Um, uh, yeah. My screen, it's okay, not. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why it's skip. Maybe Abraham, are you still presenting? Or it says Yeah, yeah, it's loading now. Yes, you can yeah. see it. Yeah. yeah. Now? Yeah, sure. Maybe I, I was playing the slide, and maybe that one I don't know. Uh, like I uh, like I explained, uh, this were the task we were asked to do. Then I done a data overview to check the data. Then I get uh, this all recurrence in the with this column. Then I use the uh, imputation technique in the drop um, uh, columns that have more than fifty percent missing values. Uh, here is what uh, I have said previously, and uh, then after that, uh, I have. Uh, uh, then the uh, univariant analysis uh, uh, using histogram in the bar chart to reveal distribution of key attributes, uh, uh, identifying patterns in our trials, essential for understanding individual characteristics. Uh, then I have done for uh, some of the columns uh, under here, like you see, uh, for underwritten, covered ID, policy ID, postal code, and uh, some others. Then uh, Mm, I have done uh, this work, uh, their uh, histogram, and uh, using bar chart, I have uh, tried, I uh, have done uh, for all uh, columns uh, to, uh, their, uh, to see their uh, characteristic. Uh, here are some uh, some of the columns. Then I have done uh, bivariant, uh, bivariant analysis uh, to see their, the, correl the, correl the relation between total premium and the total claims, like you see uh, here. Uh, they have uh, some uh, relation. Then I have the correlation analysis uh, for uh, be between their uh, these uh, columns, uh, like you see here. Uh, then I have done uh, outlier detection between uh, total premium and the total claims uh, to see their uh, relationship. Like you see, there is uh, some relation between total premium and the total claims. Uh, then uh, what I've done is uh, to create insightful uh, visualization three that uh, were asked in the task. Uh, here, like you see, this is uh, total premiums. Like you see, like Abraham said, it looks uh, uh, zero, but it has some um, values. And not, but it's small, uh, like it's not uh, big like the rest of the data. And here is a relation between total premium and the total uh, uh, premiums. And here is their correlation. Then the, uh, the insight was I gave was uh, policy characteristics that include variety of policy type and the cover, uh, predominant for new vehicles. Uh, and the other thing was a vehicle uh, specification. Most vehicle standard configuration common, at least like cylinder and four door, uh, high value vehicle are less common, but have significant problems overall, uh, premium and the total claims. Uh, the geographical distribution policy are spread across various. Postal code indicating a wide uh, customer basis. 
financial metrics uh, premium and the claims uh, data suggests that uh, while most policies are low risk with the minimum claims there are outliers with the high uh, premiums and the claims indicating potential high risk uh, segment segments uh, the, the, the conclusion uh, i get from this ed analysis was uh, the distribution of total premium reveal uh, common uh, premium amount for uh, potential outliers there is a noticeable relation between uh, total premium and the total claims indicating that higher uh, premiums might lead to uh, higher claims. Uh, the correlation uh, heat map cover, uncovers hidden relation between the various which you can uh, further uh, analyze in the model building request. Uh, the predominance of new vehicles uh, compress uh, coverage of policy. Uh, common vehicle uh, configuration led to uh, predictable premium in the uh, claim amount. Geographical diversity among uh, policy holders. Uh, here was the, the the conclusion I get and the recommendation I get from this idea that was targeted uh, marketing strategy like uh, the whole project is based on uh, how to uh, the company can uh, uh, can create a strategy that will benefit him. So I get from from the idea analysis uh, focus on uh, region pair uh, higher policyholder uh, concentration for optimizing outreach and specifying campaign for high value of vehicle owners. Uh, risk management in, uh, implement a risk mitigation plan for higher premium and higher claim policies. Uh, product recommendation a new insurance product uh, to common vehicle configuration and the customer profiles. Uh, uh, the second was uh, to do uh, hypothesis analysis. Uh, the first uh, thing was. Uh, uh, square and uh, I use uh, T square for hypothesis one, two, and the four uh, to 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 uh, to determine uh, risk difference across prov uh, provenance, uh, zip code, and gender. And uh, I use uh, T test for using uh, for for hypothesis three to determine uh, the difference ac across uh, zip codes uh, to get uh, that one. And uh, what I did was uh, not uh, satisfactory. Uh, uh, I think uh, it failed to reject the uh, null hypothesis uh, in most in in for in both uh, the for, the the for, the four uh, uh, hypothesis. And uh, what uh, I get here, uh, like you see, uh, the the, the Q, Q test uh, amount is there. P value I get one for most of uh, the hypothesis. And uh, here, uh, sample size uh, was uh, was satisfactory, but I can't able to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, that was the result I get. Uh, here is a conclusion. Like I told, uh, p values um, for most of them I get one. Uh, the conclusion I get was uh, the hypothesis testing provides a valuable insight into risk and margin uh, dynamics across the uh, different demographic and geographical segments. Uh, while uh, no significant difference were found, the analysis uh, insurance focus on other potential area for optimizations. Uh, the, the fourth task was uh, predict predictive model, uh, uh, doing predictive model. Uh, the first thing was I get, uh, I, I done is to identify the features that are uh, important for uh, high uh, premium and uh, high claim uh, uh, feature, features that are crucial for this. And the, the feature was uh, high risk level in the margin, margin profit margin. Uh, then after identifying them, uh, I I used the uh, label encoder to encode them uh, to to uh, numerical values. So that's uh, the machine learning uh, we can um, we can learn the machine learning model. Then I have done uh, data separation, uh, data splitting into test in the uh, tree. Uh, tree. Uh, using this uh, psychic uh, model, uh, then I have done uh, I have done uh, the regression model, uh, decision tree, uh, in the random forest in the uh, XG boost model. Uh, after after I have done, here is where, where uh, the result I have got. Uh, in the uh, after that, here was a regression matrix. The regression matrix the for. Uh, for linear regression, uh, total premium, uh, I get this value. Uh, and uh, for total uh, claims, this 
uh, the model that was performing for me great was uh, the random forest method. Yeah, it's, it's also take uh, a lot of time for me to build it. Uh, uh, the, 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 for for, for, uh, for in the next uh, the next model that perform well is uh, XG boost uh, which which perform uh, second uh, the second model that perform good for me and uh, here is a model performance uh, based on uh, in different uh, in the different attributes of the columns here like you see it's a small but it cannot be seen but uh, here was their uh, performance. Uh, the decision I get was that the farmers performance is the best for both total premium and uh, total claim uh, prediction task. Uh, the site uh, was uh, calculated premium per term and uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, injured were the most uh, influential feature, suggesting they should be considered in policy pricing strategy. Uh, the next uh, step were uh, for, for, the, for the future. Uh, further refining the model using each parameter, uh, tuning and exploring additional feature engineering to improve uh, predictive performance, considering implementing random forest model in production of real-time prediction. Uh, here was uh, the next step uh, I plan uh, to do. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, if you have questions. Matthias, thank you. Uh, it was uh, very nice presentation maybe yeah yeah and Nati, if you have some questions uh sorry uh i got a different laptop and i was muted uh mm -hmm. i had a couple of questions for abraham sorry uh I, I saw the r square for linear regression is greater than one uh or was mm -hmm. i mistaken uh, is this for me or is for Abraham? It's for Abraham. Uh, okay. Yeah, you 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 did great. Um, I like everything. Thank you, Matthias. Hello. Abraham? Yeah. Can you repeat the question, please? The the uh, model evaluation. The R square error for linear regression, oh. how much was it? Okay, uh, you mean uh, you mean this? Yes, yes. Is that 6.28 or something? 6.28, yeah. Yeah, that, that can't be real. Uh, you know, the R square is between zero and one, and we want it to be closer to one, and it can't okay. be zero. Uh, so also for the other metrics it's it's okay but um it would be nice to normalize it make it between zero and one so that we can see it clearly like the arrow square for decision tree and random forest we can we can see it but that's still too small something is not right or am i mistaken yeah I think uh, uh, I remember something. I think I missed uh, the no, the normalization part. I I don't remember doing normalization. I think. No no no. It's not about Maybe normalizing. That's it's not about normalizing the data. Uh, if it's not, I mean, it, it doesn't matter if it's normalized or not. But still, the the uh, root square should be between zero and one. And uh, the uh, decision tree are square and the random forest are square values tell us that it's it's not doing well uh, because the R2 square should be closer to one, like 0. Point, I don't know, seven something uh, like Matthew's result. Uh, I think something yeah. is wrong with your analysis. Uh, okay, I'll check it. it. I'll check it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And maybe Mati can help you me on that. And yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so maybe back to Matthias. 
you were mentioning that the you have the p-value of one on the on the most key so that you cannot reject the null hypothesis so it's kind of that you're we're saying yeah yes you uh, for sure, no. We're saying that the parameters are not related with he, with each other. So that if if our hypothesis or if our calculation is right, it means that we're not supposed to do any prediction or you know analysis based on that. So what do you do? You think that you're uh, maybe I have seen in your PPT you mentioning the power analysis. So have you tried to make the power analysis in order to make sure that our p value is right or not? And what measurement have you tried to use? Uh, Matthias, uh, have you heard my question? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, okay. I have heard you. Uh, I, I have also confused uh, to to get. Uh, I, I have tried so many ways. Uh, I, I have sought a lot of ways, but I, have, I haven't. I haven't able to get uh, uh, to accept or to uh, the analysis or to to reject it. Because I, 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 like, like you said, I have done uh, the power analysis in that. The power analysis is uh, telling me that uh, the sample, uh, the, sam uh, the sample sizes uh, also uh, are proportional in, in the, it's, it's good, but I don't know. I, I can't be able to reject them. You know, like uh, I, I, I have an idea about how it is not able to reject uh, the analyticus. Uh, I don't think I'm right also. Uh, I've also uh, tried to ask uh, you, but I ha you are not online. That's uh, that's why why I was able uh, to get more into deep into solving the problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think you have just understand the problem too. So maybe if Abraham got uh, like I I heard Abraham had a very minimum zero and zero point zero three p value. So maybe we can we can. Know. Yeah, you can, you can also share some information since it's kind of a must to have a p value less than the significant value. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, next, so it's, it's kind of uh, useful and informative to share the your presentations, your works, and everything. So, yeah, we need to see more people now. Who's going to go next? Oh yeah, Danit. You can start, Danit. Okay, let me share my screen. Can you see? Yeah, Hello? it's loading. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to present my report, and uh, I should uh, go fast in order to save time. So uh, I'll go to the data cleaning at preparation stage okay the first thing i do was to convert the text file uh, to data frame using this code from a Jupyter notebook then save this csv file to uh, local storage which is the, the the dvc local storage Then the next stage is to understand the data. So I load the data set, which is which I saved to the local storage. Uh, then I see almost one million and ninety-eight rows and fifty-two columns on the load data. In the data structure using the uh, info method, and I see it. There are almost a uh, lot of object types. 
And after that, there is an int 64 uh, data type, and there is also Boolean. Uh, there are almost four types of uh, data types. So this data type should be uh, converted to appropriate data types. For instance, the object data type should be converted to string uh, in order to manipulate the values and the dates, uh, the date variables like the transaction ones should be converted to the date type. Uh, so I did, I did that in this stage, in the data formatting stage. When I did that, the like you see, it is converted to date type data type. But as you can see, it is a, it says object, but under internally it it converts to string. Uh, the next stage is to find the missing values. When I find a few uh, the missing values, there are uh, some missing values on columns like MM code uh, and cylinders, QB capacity. So this should be handled. So when I handled them, uh, the, uh, there is no missing values. As you can see, I replace the categorical uh, data types to uh, not not available value and the others uh, numerical values to their mean but as you can see the number of vehicles is not changed because i was not uh, sure in what type in what value to convert it then after uh, uh, for uh, handling the missing values, I should save the data sets. Then I did that. As you can see, it's saved as a cleaned machine learning CSV file. So after for uh, exploratory data analysis, I will use this cleaned data set. So I load this cleaned data set and display the results. The next step will be the descriptive analysis where for variability. As you can see, there is a range variance in standard deviations for these column types, total video, total premium, total claims, and so on. The next will be univariant analysis for numerical values. Uh, I I uh, I didn't plot every numerical values to save time and uh, the presentation and the report uh, page. But as you can see, you can give the numerical uh, data type column and name, then it will generate for you uh, like this. So uh, I did four total claims. Then this is a value, as you can see, almost uh, all values are between uh, uh, negative almost to one and uh, up to 10,000 maybe. The next, the next is the bar chart for categorical data. For categorical data, I selected for excess selected uh, column. As you can see, there are a lot of uh, mobility wind screen. Uh, and the lowest one, as you can see, is a mobility factory sound. The next to be the bivariant or multivariant uh, plot between monthly changes, total premium, and total claims. When I plot the scatter plot for this, as you can see, there are uh, outliers to the negative and positive side. When I hover on it, it's uh, a province with postal code 8000. And when I searched for that postal code, it was found that it was Western Cape province. So 
almost all outliers are from this province. And uh, other other provinces are around zero. There are there are same, same uh, similarities. So why is this uh, province uh, becomes like this? There are multiple reasons, maybe. The first one is regional insurance market. The dynamics could be driven by factors such as competition, market revolution, and specific insurance trends relevant in that region. Unique factors in the Western Cape, the Western Cape groups might have specific characteristics or circumstances. These factors include high frequency of claims, uh, income levels, unique risks, and uh, market dynamics. There is also a localized risk like crime rates uh, and uh, natural disasters. So the next step is outlier detection on total premium. As you can see, there are outliers in here. The, the third task is AP, AB hypothesis testing for uh, there are no risk differences across provinces. So the first step will be formulating the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis would be there are no risk difference across provinces. And the alternative will be there are risk differences across provinces. The next step will be selecting the significance level. I select truth uh, to be 0 0.05. And the next step will be preparing the data aggregating the data and grouping uh, the province and calculate the total claims for each province, uh, province. And this will be the output after uh, preparing the, the data, there is provinces and the, their respective total claims. Then on this, I performed a child square test. Finally, after testing this, the result is rejecting the natural hypothesis. Therefore, there are risks differences across provinces. The last step will be analyzing the, the, the result. Based on the test the results, you can see that the child square is 0 0.4. So the p-value is 0. This indicates that there are significant risk differences across provinces. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis that there are no risk differences across provinces. Then the next test is there are no risk differences between zip codes. Like above, I, uh, I formulate the null and uh, alternative hypothesis, selecting the significance level and preparing the data. When I group the data, I take one for group A data, this zip code, and the next, I take the North Cape uh, zip code because I wanted to see how this affected, uh, how this uh, North Cape uh, uh, province becomes this much outlier uh, point. So I take that zip code and perform. Uh, the test on these two provinces. The output is this for group A and group B. Then after performing the T test for independent samples, I again reject the null hypothesis because there are risk differences between zip codes. As you can see, for group A, the mean is uh, 39. For group B, which is the North Cape province, the mean is almost 145 or something. So there are risk differences across the ports, or in this case, in this uh, data set case, uh, the postal code. Yeah. Finally, I'm analyzing, the, analyzing in the, the results 
in making decision like based on those things the general hypothesis reject there are statistically significant risk difference between z course leading to the acceptance of acceptance of general hypothesis i didn't do the task for modeling the task because i was short on time while i was reading on it and preparing how to build one for that but uh, i promise i will do one in this week the recommendation my, my recommendation is there are risk differences across the provinces like we see above especially in west Cairo province so the company should not spend more resources and time in this province instead focus on another other provinces like Timpopo or Eastern Cape. Future work in future can be an initial tech platform like Fintech can be developed for this company uh, in order to uh, find risks uh, and uh, perform uh, insurance process uh, smoothly. Thanks. Hello. Yeah, oh. hello. Uh -huh. Danny. So uh, it's it's really nice. Uh, so um, some recommendations I have maybe I think you've covered all the things that you've done in your analysis and also there is um, you just mentioned that you are not able to do the predictive analysis or the modeling part because of shortage of time it could have been really good if you've done that because somehow the one of the most important uh, Asks, asks on this challenge. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe while trying to present your presentation, this goes for everyone. So you can assume that you're presenting all your works. Finally, doing the analysis, doing whatever it is wanted to then Yeah, you need to present it for the person who have uh, recommended or or. dared to do those analysis or those tasks. So you need to think it's not it's not much important. Actually it's not even important to share all the codes and uh, that technique something like that. Okay, maybe you can jump the code parts and focus on how you accomplished the task and what you've seen from the task or what you recommend or what is the result of the task or the, the things that you've done. Okay. So we can just put in a, in a, it's better to put, you know, if it is a presentation for us, rather the report, it's, I'm not thinking about the report that we give for the, that we submit, okay? If it is a, but if it is a presentation, we can keep it as small as 10 slides or something and focus on the results and the things that we wanted to solve. Yeah, and overall it was good. Um, not just um i yeah, think no. just a suggestion i think we're good yeah we, Am can, I we think yes yes is there any other person who wanted to Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you can continue. Um, it, it was good, Daniel, but it, it's it's short. I mean, the uh, modeling part is the important one. Uh, you did the, the A-B test uh, very well, uh, the way you take the steps, even though um, it was not necessary to present it here. As Rodit said, you could have just uh, showed the, the results. Uh, the p-value is this, then we reject this, so the, uh, there is no 
risk difference between yeah you, you could have do that um i like the way you do the testing for different provinces and identify the western cape uh out of those uh provinces which actually is true in reality um i really don't get the actual result but the, the western province uh is diversity uh, that's the reason why you get outliers in in that uh, region so it, it was a good a b testing analysis uh, but you could have make it great if you did the uh, uh, modeling yeah thank you Okay, thanks. So thank you, uh, everyone. Okay. Any other person who want to go next? Okay. I think we're also um, some out of time. And for the next time, we will let you know. Uh, you know, we, we, we I think it's going to be better if we have a fixed time, and we're going to fix that time, and we will let you know. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And thank you, Matthias, Daniel, and Abraham for presenting. Yeah. It was really helpful, I guess, for everyone. So, yeah, we can, in the tier, I can give for a million now. Thank you. A million? Yes. Uh, thank you so much. That was wonderful. So, uh, everyone is done? Yes, actually, three people have presented, and I think it's enough. I mean, yeah, we're kind of out of time, too. Okay, so the announcement, if you can remain the announcement, uh, you, you can keep uh, refreshing the schedule. It might be updated anytime, the schedule, this weekly schedule. And then, I guess, no other announcement. Is there any other announcement or anything from the team? Ready to or yeah, yeah, before we wrap up? No, not by my side. Okay. So I think everything is fine. Thank you so much for today. Uh, yeah, the next thing is community building session. Uh, the challenge today on Slack. So let's just react and that will be it today. So thank you and bye.